Hey, it's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. Today I'm going to start uh, what I think is going to be a three-part series talking about photography, where it's going, where it's been, uh, a little bit about Sports Illustrated, its demise, its glory years, um, and just sort of the whole field and, and, and where we are at, the state of the art right now. Um, you know, I started Sports Illustrated in the 70s and caught some of the uh, latter glory days, but most of the real evolution, the technical evolution, was done by people in the 50s and 60s, the strobing basketball, remote cameras. Uh, I mean, we invented all this stuff. We had our own channel frequency for radios. We had uh, special cameras made. John Zimmerman had the camera with the split lens so you could shoot above and below the water. Uh, all this stuff was, was developed, a great deal of it, by Sports Illustrated and to some extent other Time Inc. photographers such as Life Magazine. Tremendous photography there, tremendous innovation there. Uh, that's all pretty standard now. In fact, a lot of it isn't even needed. Uh, strobes for basketball, strobes in the ceiling for basketball. Very rarely does anybody use those anymore. Uh, you can just jack your ISO up in most arenas and you're pretty good. Uh, strobes are still very good if you're using remotes in basketball because you get depth of field that you don't get with available light, but that's an aside. Uh, so here comes this magazine started by Henry Luce in 1950 something uh, that just sets out to turn photography on its ear, and, and, and we did. Um, and now it's gone, essentially. Uh, so what's left? Uh, photography a whole lot better technically, wonderful cameras, amazing cameras, you know, great technology, uh, easy, you know, you can order up a, a remote off Amazon.com that will fire your camera from anywhere. Uh, all this stuff is right available to anybody with, just with a, a touch of the keyboard. Uh, so there are a lot more pictures being taken now, uh, but that doesn't mean there are a lot more, a lot better pictures being taken now. I think the fact that you have a camera doesn't make you a photographer, and I think that a lot of people think it does. Um, you have to still find a way, and it's tougher now. There's so much photography that to delineate yourself, to make, as we say, a picture that makes you stop turning the page, or in these days, stop scrolling and go, wow, that's hard. That's even harder. You can have the best camera in the world. You can have the wonderful EOS 1DX Mark III, maybe. Maybe you'll have one of those soon. And still, you got to take a picture. You got to use your head. You got to be able to create something that is going to grab someone's attention in this world where they're bombarded with imagery all the time from everywhere from their phone their computer their laptop everywhere outside go through go to times square in new york city it'll just you know you have you'll have a seizure uh, so in the midst of all that you still have to think about making a great picture and it is really tough and uh, that's one of the things that's happening in the business now now, as far as when I say the word business, as, a, as opposed to saying the word art or, or whatever creative field, uh, the business by and large sucks. Um, the great assignments are mostly gone. I, I look at some things that I did. Um, I did for Coca-Cola in the 80s where I would rent a stadium. I did this several times. I hired 250 extras, 75 bucks a day. You don't want to look too close at them, but 75 bucks a day, you get 250 bodies to put in the seats so you can stage a football game, a baseball game. We did an interior at the pond in Anaheim, uh, the Honda Center, whatever it's called now, and we did uh, hockey and basketball on the same day. We did half hockey, one side hockey, one side basketball. We just moved everybody around, had them change their clothes. Nobody does this anymore. It's all done, you know, it's all done in Photoshop. It's all done in the computers. Uh, it's a whole different challenge. I, I used to like those big logistical jobs. I, I really enjoyed them. Same thing with car shooting. I mean, car shooting used to be a, like a, an expedition. You'd spend two weeks in, in some desert location only working 
two hours a day, the golden hour, dawn and dusk, sleeping the rest of the day or getting ready. Uh, now that's not really happening. Um, I'm not a car shooter. I don't know the specifics, but I know things are a lot different. Most everything can be done with CGI now. So again, here's a, here's a skill, here's a talent that was then and it's no longer now. Um, but on the good side, their photography is accessible. Photographs are more accessible. Uh, I have a friend who played uh, all through high school football and uh, three years of college football and has three pictures of himself playing football. Now every, every child who plays any sport whatsoever, if they don't have professionally shot pictures, they have pictures shot by their parents that are pretty near as good as the professionals. So in that sense, this is good. Everybody, photography for the masses. But uh, as, as a, earning a living as a photographer, that's a lot tougher. Um, there are too many people with too many cameras, and I believe Instagram has sort of poisoned the well in terms of what people think is a good picture. A picture that you look at on your phone sometimes can be very arresting, but is it really a great picture? I think it's kind of hard to tell a lot of the times. But people are very accepting, and people like a lot of pictures that, you know, wouldn't have been made 10, 15, 20 years ago. So I think that's another place. Uh, obviously, the money isn't there anymore. A lot of the money isn't there. Um, there are plenty of ways to make money in photography right now, but not the old model of assignment photography or staff photography, getting paid a salary to work for a publication or getting paid a reasonable, livable day rate for working for a publication, getting paid space rate at Sports Illustrated. When we were on contract, we were paid a day rate against space. So you went out and you got your five, six hundred bucks for your day's work, but if you got a cover, that's two thousand bucks. If you got a double truck inside, that's another thousand. And a couple of smaller pictures, that's maybe thirty seven hundred dollars you'd make in, in one day. Uh, that was very incentivizing. Made us really good shooters. Uh, those days are gone. They're all gone. Um, you know, you have to look different ways, different different places. And, and, and coming up, we'll talk a little bit more about those different avenues to uh, make a living in photography. We're going to have some interesting stuff coming up. Uh, next episode, we're going to talk with Steve Fine, former director of photography at Sports Illustrated for 17 years, former picture editor at uh, New York Times, New York Times Magazine, picture editor at Flipboard. Here's a guy who's seen more sports photos than pretty much anybody on the planet. So we'll talk with Steve about his take on where the business has been and where it's going. Uh, and going on, we'll have other people on. We'll talk about other aspects of the business. So for now, uh, good shooting. It's Peter Reed Miller from On Sports Photography with Peter Reed Miller. I want to thank my friends at GF Crew for making this video possible. If you want to make money shooting action sports, check out GF Crew. Go to gfcrew.com to join. It's free. They have a whole process and an app set up to help you make money shooting sports. Check it out. Get started today.